Hey YouTube, it's Adrian. Just before we get you to this video, do me a favor and head over to pageantlaunch.com. We are starting the world's first dedicated pageant review site, and I would love for you to join our launch team. All you need to do is put in your email address. It's completely free. We are looking to make a pageant industry that is safe, transparent, and fair. I know it's like that most of the time, but over the last year, it's become very evident that it's not like that all of the time. So head over to pageantlaunch.com, put in your email address, and let's get you to this video. Hi, I'm Savannah Miles, Teen Universe Georgia 2020, and this is my interview with The Pageant Project. What's up, everyone? It's Adrian from The Pageant Project. I was about to say The Pageant Planet, long story. Um, and I've got a very special return guest, Savannah Miles. Savannah, how are you? I'm doing well, how are you? I'm doing very well. Uh, it's been a while, we were discussing before we went live, it's been a while since I've had Savannah on. We actually think it's about two years, two years ago. Yes, we've been friends so, for a minute. <laughs> Has anything changed in those two years or everything is the same? No, definitely a lot has changed. Um, so I started college uh, when you first met me. I was in high school, so grown up a little bit. Um, I'm now competing at Teen Universe and I open my own boutique and life has definitely been faster, but we're here and we're loving it. <laughs> that's, a, that's a lot of things. That's basically everything I wanted to talk to you about. So for, I mean, back back two years ago, I don't even know if, most of my audience was the same. So let's assume that they don't know who you are, although I know for a fact a lot of them do know who you are because you're that you're just that famous, apparently. Okay. Um, <laughs> but what, why don't you give the be, uh, the brief introduction? Why don't we go into the pageant history first, how you got involved with pageantry and the pageants you've involved involved with so far? Right. So I was kind of late to the pageant game. Um, I actually started competing when I was about 15 years old. So a lot of girls start much younger than that, um, at least here in the States. But so I started competing. What I did well at is I was Miss Georgia Teen USA. I actually competed twice, which we talked about in our previous interview. So I competed twice for Miss Georgia Teen USA. Um, won Miss Georgia Teen USA back in 2018 and went on to Miss Teen USA, where I was placed in the top 10. And after that, I went to Miss Ohio Collegiate America and complete, competed at Miss Collegiate America last summer, where I was also in the top 10. And now I'm the reigning Teen Universe Georgia, where I'll be competing next month at the Teen Universe USA pageant in Orlando. Okay, um, let's clarify first. Is that going to be in person or is that going to be virtual? It is in person, yes. So we are excited to actually go to a pageant. <laughs> That is one of the first pageants actually that I know of that will be in person because all the other ones have been either postponed or cancelled. So yeah. that's got to be exciting that you actually get to do it for real, not in front of a webcam. <laughs> right. I'm very excited to actually go. Okay. Um, and can you tell us a little bit more about the Teen Universe system? Because you're definitely the first person I've interviewed who's been um, a contestant in that. So can you give us um, any info about Teen Universe? Right. So it's a bit of a newer system. It's actually celebrating its 10th anniversary this year. So it's super exciting. It has the basic mode of transportation uh, competition. So we have interview, evening gown and swimsuit. And so right now, so I'm going to Miss Teen Universe USA. And then afterwards, if I were to advance on, you compete at Teen Universe, which is held in Nicaragua this year, which wow. should be exciting. Wow, that's um that's a, that's a different country to hold um, an international pageant in. Were you going to take a break from pageantry though? I can't remember because I oh, feel like you were going to and then you didn't. I know, I know. I think I have the pageant bug. I, I love what pageants do for me as a person. Like I love having a goal and sticking to it and getting ready for it. And so naturally I know that pageants do that for me. So I keep coming back and falling back in love with the sport. <laughs> Right. And do you have any goals for yourself with Teen Universe? You mentioned you've got two top 10 finishes and obviously the, the, the systems you've been a part of are really big ones. So top 10 is already great. Do you have yeah. any expectations or goals for yourself with Teen Universe? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I definitely want to break my top 10 
curse. I am ready to make the top five and hopefully win. Um, I really am excited about this organization and what Teen University stands for and what it really could be. I think that there's a lot that this organization could grow from with me as a national title holder. And so I'm excited to hopefully take that on this year. <laughs> Beautiful. And guys, if you're watching, if you haven't watched one of my interviews before, if you put any questions in the comments, I'll pass them on to Savannah. Um, Savannah, in the, I mean, we mentioned that I interviewed you probably two years ago. Yeah. In that time, how do you think you've changed, not necessarily just as a person, but in terms of pageantry, how do you think the you now is different to the you I spoke to two years ago? I definitely have made patents more. I think when I first started, I truly saw it as such a big picture. I saw like really down the road. And what I realized is through competing, I really have to live in the moment more. I truly have taken that saying, be where your feet are to heart. And now I think the pageant competitor I am now, I'm much more in the moment, enjoying the day-to-day -day life as a title holder, not just prepping for the national pageant. I think there's so much joy that can come from truly just understanding your title and taking each day to get prepared for it and putting the work in. I think that's half the battle. And so definitely have started to understand that as a more seasoned competitor now. Was that difficult for you to learn to live more in the moment and not look too far ahead? Yes, absolutely. I'm definitely someone who always wants like to know what's happening down the road. I'm always like planning. I'm a planner. I'm OCD. So uh, <laughs> I definitely like want to want to plan my future. And so it's hard to just like let some control go for once. And 2020, speaking of letting go of control, in 2020, <laughs> most people have learned that they have to let go of control. So yeah. <laughs> how has your 2020 been? I mean, given probably I'm sure you had plans for what to do and 2020 has thrown an absolute monkey wrench in most people's plans, not just in pageantry, but in life. So how have you sort of balanced 2020 with the way it's ended up being? Right, so 2020 has definitely been a lot different than I expected when I rang in the new year. I definitely did not think um, that many things would happen. So it's been different. I actually went to college in St. Louis last year in Missouri. And so I moved back from Missouri to Georgia. So that's been an adjustment in and of itself. Um, but it's been very well. Um, I didn't think I was going to start my boutique this year. It's something I was planning to start um, in years to follow. But because I had so much time to truly you know be at home and i was quarantined i had the time to really put into it and actually start the business so you know it definitely was hard at first but something beautiful came out of it i'll just update you with the comments and guys again if you're watching and you haven't seen my interviews before you can absolutely put the comments in and i'll bring them up so Sav can see so savannah blakely love it has said so proud of you savannah love you babe. and we've got a question from emilia puerta how do you see yourself in five years Right. So I'm actually applying to medical school, um, hopefully next year. So I definitely will be completing medical school and I want to be a plastic surgeon. So I'll be within my residency getting ready to enter the field. So I see myself doing that. Hopefully I have a few crowns on my shelf that I can show off during my residency and be the girl that can do both. How long um, a period are we talking about med, med school in the US? Like how, how much study is that? So med school is four years and then residency can vary from a year to three years. Um, it just depends what field you're going into. Wow. Okay. So next time I interview, you might be Dr. Miles. Oh, yes. Hopefully. We'll see. <laughs> are you sure you're going to be able to do pageants whilst doing med school? Because from what I've seen with American <laughs> TV, med school doesn't leave you much time to do anything. No, it doesn't. And I, I already have a very hard major um, in college. I'm majoring in neuroscience. So it's already pretty time consuming, but it definitely is just time management. I think once I get to medical school, I'll take a break for real this time and um, really just enjoy. <laughs> That's what you said last time. I know. I mean it this time. <laughs> So how how do you go about balancing your day? I mean, you and we'll get onto the boutique because I, I I really want to talk about that. But how do you balance everything? I mean, it's a question I ask a lot. But with such a demanding major, med school, it's not like an arts degree. Not that I want to, you know, poo poo arts degrees. But arts degrees sometimes, you know, you don't spend that much time actually at college. But med school, you got your boutique, you're doing pageantry. How do you balance it all? 
Oh my goodness. Um, it definitely is overwhelming at times. I definitely have understood the value of a calendar, the value of bullet pointing yeah. priorities that you need to get done. I make lists everywhere and have post-it notes on every mirror in the house of what I need to do for the day. So it really is just finding ways to trick yourself to truly put these priorities first and understanding that that in school and the business and everything comes before any personal endeavors I want to do. Wow. Okay. Um, and you said post-it notes. So am I right in thinking that you do everything old school on paper? You're not joining the digital revolution just yet? <laughs> right. No, I'm super old school. So. so God forbid, what would happen if your post-it notes blew away or? Oh, I guess I'd have to go to Office Max and buy some more. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you've got the list in your head. You wouldn't forget. I know I should, but I don't think I have it all memorized. It's a long list. It's a lot of post-its. Okay. <laughs> right. I feel like if we turn the camera around, your wall would just be a complete litany of like post-it notes. We're not going to look, but. <laughs> I feel like I can see you looking there. So I'm imagining you're literally looking. Are there post-it notes on the other side? You know, there may be a few. <laughs> Rough count. How many are in front of you right now? Only like two. Only like two. Only like two. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Okay. Let, let's move on. Let's move on to the boutique. Um, so you've launched a boutique. Remind me what the name was. It was Smiles. It's called Miles of Styles. Miles of Styles. Okay. I love the play on words. Tell us about it. I mean, it's pretty obvious why you would launch it because you know you're in the industry. You know the industry. You know what you know what girls are looking for. But why don't you tell us why you decided to launch it? and anything else you want to tell us about it. <laughs> For sure. So, I mean, I grew up as a competitor and trying to find looks that are individualized and help you feel beautiful is so hard, um, especially with the fast fashion that we have out nowadays. Mm -hmm. It's super hard to find clothes that are good quality, but also look amazing. And from the pageant eye that I have from my years of competing, I was able to talk with vendors and able to find these clothes that are truly, I think, made for the perfect pageant girl. And so being able to open Miles of Styles really just allowed me to put a one-stop shop for girls to not only find, you know, your dream outfits for check-in and interview and these, you know, important events that you need to look the part, um, but also have accessories because I'm sure, you know, as pageant girls, we love earrings. We buy earrings everywhere we go. And so to have a place where you can find the best earrings that you are guaranteed that will look great on stage is what I wanted to offer. Can you give us any sort of blanket, like 101 fashion tips, maybe for people who are a bit more new into pageantry, what mm -hmm. they should be looking for, for different sections, the accessories, things like that? Right. Um, absolutely. If you're new to pageants, definitely understand your body shape. There are countless Pinterest boards you can look at at just understanding your figure. I think that's the most important thing. It's, it's really easy to look at a dress on someone and be like, wow, I love that dress. I need that dress. But it can look completely different on you based on your mm. shape. Um, so I think that's first and foremost what you need to realize and understanding how to kind of cheat the system and look amazing and what you can wear. And so, um, but for accessories, I always say that to have fun, um, especially for the like, my teen title holders, I style, I absolutely love fun earrings and looking like a teen, keeping it clean. You don't need to be too sexy as a teen. So definitely just embrace your teenage years and look the part. <laughs> okay, rather than me having the word boutique underneath, why don't we give the ladies and gentlemen watching the actual link? So what's the, um, what's the address of, the, uh, of your boutique, Savannah? <laughs> So our Instagram is at shop miles of styles at shop miles of style. So tell me if I've put this in correctly. Is that it? That is it. Perfect. So okay. Good. <laughs> uh, so people go, go and have a look, maybe not right now. I mean, we still have Savannah here. So <laughs> everyone leaves the interview and goes to check out your boutique. Yeah. Um, now, my podcast co-host, Lauren Parkinson, has said, hey, love Savannah. We randomly bumped into each other in Florida once. <laughs> we did. She's so amazing. Love her. <laughs> how, how did you just, what, there's no one else in Florida, just you two and you bumped into each other? How did that happen? <laughs> I was in Florida for a pageant that I used to compete in called Princess America. And there was another, I think it's called Miss Galaxy. 
that yes, Lauren the galaxy system. Yep. Yes. And they were there as well. And I was walking through the lobby and the director came up to me and she was like, this is going to sound really weird. You look like this girl that competed at Miss Teen USA. And I was like, I am that girl that competed at Miss Teen USA. And she was like, is there any way you come to our pajama party tonight and just talk to the girls a little bit about pageants? I was like, absolutely. So I showed up to the pajama party and me and Lauren were able to party it up. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. don't want to talk any crap about my podcast co-host but better be careful with that one because um she, yeah. she she knows how to party so let's just put it that way um a lovely Welshie now that's not the first time I've heard I know my other podcast co-host Danielle when I mentioned that I was interviewing you or she saw that I was interviewing you she she said she had you picked um as she wanted you to win Teen USA when you competed um and there's a few people who who know you. So just out of interest, so maybe this might take a bit of time to think about, why do you think people recognize you or, or look up to you? A aside from obviously you look amazing, but do you, th is it work ethic? Is it something else? Like what do you think you stand for in the pageant industry? Um, talking with former coaches of mine, I, I really came from, um, I had that eye of a tiger, which I think is really rare in pageants. You have the girls that obviously want to wear the pretty dress. They want to look the part. The crown is obviously a great incentive. Um, but to truly understand the industry and know where you stand in it, um, I knew that I really wanted to be Miss Georgia Teen USA. I knew that I wanted to be a national title holder and no one was going to tell me anything to help that not happen um mm. so in the pageant industry i'm just very relentless i'm fearless um and that shows both in a personal reason but also in my fashionable um aspect and so it's just i think i just have that eye of a tiger that you have to have as a seasonal pageant girl do you know where you got that eye of the tiger from Oh, I think out of my mom. My mom competed in pageants in the gonna... 80s, and so she has, you know, taught that to me since birth and just go after your dreams fearlessly. Why don't you just give us the one-on-one -on, -one on your mom? What, do, what does mom mean to you? What does she do for you? Oh. <laughs> well, she's my best friend. Um, she definitely is my best friend. Um, but so she was the person that introduced me to pageants. Um, actually, I thank my mom all the time because she didn't let me compete in pageants at first. I was a little girl and I loved the pictures of her gown and in our living room we have this big like mural of her with her crowns and I was like I want that so bad and my mom when I was younger was just told me you're not going to compete until you truly understand it and I was so mad at her for the longest time I was like you're not letting me live <laughs> I was like I have I want to be a pageant girl. Um, but finally, when I got to the age that I truly could appreciate pageants was when I was able to compete. And I'm very grateful that I had that time to, you know, admire the industry and love it and watch it as a fan. And then to truly come in as a competitor, I think, gave me an advantage that I'm very grateful to have. So mom was right. Mom was definitely right. She always is, if I like to admit it or not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's one thing to admit it. It's another thing to admit it on a live interview because I just I keep thinking, she's well, monking out. <laughs> I mean, she's watching. I mean, look, she said, oh, she is my oh, best friend. Thanks, mom. <laughs> so there you go, mom. You are always right. Remember that for any and all future arguments. <laughs> Will do. <laughs> All right, uh, Joanna uh, or Johanna, sorry, I don't know which way it is, has asked, what are your future plans? Because we're, we're talking about your boutique. So what are your future plans with your boutique? I absolutely want to keep growing it. I want to see pageant girls feeling completely confident. And if Miles of Styles is able to help them, that's absolutely what the purpose of it is. So with my boutique, I really just want to continue to grow it, continue to find outfits that speak to girls and helping girls style themselves to truly feel like the most beautiful queen they are. Perfect. Okay. Uh, Lauren here said, because at Teen USA, your styling was everything. Oh, thank uh, you. I think Lauren is fangirling over you here a little bit, Savannah. Like you just look so ready. Oh, but there you go. Thank you. I definitely was. <laughs> Got a vote of confidence there. And Nicole Keeley has said, XOXO, she always is right. A hundred percent. Yes, she always is. <laughs> I'm assuming we're talking about your mom and not about yourself here. So, okay. Probably my mom, definitely not me. <laughs> <laughs> your mom's good. Your mom's got a lot of support here. I know. Uh, my mom's interview. We need to get her down here. <laughs> should interview your mom. Um, with the boutique, 
Uh, obviously, when when I look at pageant fashion, there's a lot of well, there's a few big names. Um, obviously, with Sherry Hill and McDougal and things like that. So, with your boutique, are you sourcing it from them, or are you looking at sort of pieces from smaller, lesser known designers? So it actually is not evening gowns. So Sherry Hill, um, who I model for and love, um, designs yeah. pageant and prom um, gowns and homecoming dresses. So with my boutique, it's much more ready to wear. So these are much more appearance driven dresses and casual dresses, interview outfits, um, things that are a bit more, um, you know, that you need on a more normal basis that you need more yeah. frequently. Um, but so I'm sourcing them from smaller um, places that have more casual style dresses. Very nice. Okay. And I should ask, because a lot of my fan base is in the UK and Australia, do you shop, inter do you ship internationally? I do. I do. I haven't had my first order from internationally. So first one, we'll throw in a special surprise. <laughs> okay. Lauren, quickly order something. <laughs> <laughs> or, or some earrings or, or something. Um, yeah. Savannah, you, you mentioned that you're, you're going into med school soon. Um, so obviously you're studying. Um, and in terms of what's keeping you busy outside of pageantry and outside of med school, I mean, do you have anything that any hobbies or anything to do to relax? Do you have anything apart from everything else you're doing on those to do lists? Right. Um, I actually just started hiking. So I've been going hiking. There's this mountain by my house called Stone Mountain. I've hiked up it a lot. Um, and it keeps getting taller every time I hike it, I think. Um, it gets harder and harder. <laughs> but so I started picking up that and really just getting outside more often, which has been really fun and just a great stress reliever with everything going on. Why is it getting harder? Shouldn't it get easier? I feel like the mountain is growing. Like every time I go, I'm like, oh gosh, it's even taller today. <laughs> it's so tall. Hear me. <laughs> okay. Um, and so when is, uh, when is Teen Universe uh, US happening? When did you say it was? It's the last week of October till November 1st. Right. So it's just a little more than a month away. How are you feeling in the lead up to it? I mean, as you identified, you're a seasoned pageant competitor, so you've done this before. How are you feeling? How, how are you feeling differently, let's say, in the lead up to it this time than your other pageant, uh, pageant experiences? Right. Um, I definitely feel very prepared for this. I've had a lot of time, obviously, with quarantine happening to be able to truly give the time that it deserves. So I definitely feel like I am very organized and prepared now more than ever. I'm really excited to get on stage and it's kind of building up to where I really just want to get on a stage now. Um, you know, it's, it's really rare to go out and about now more than ever. And so getting to go out and compete, it sounds so exciting. And that is just fueling me to want to do my best and want to do well at this pageant. And I don't think I asked you this last time, which, which aspect of pageantry has you most hooked? Like what's your favorite section or favorite aspect about pageantry? Oh, definitely interview. I love interview and I love feeling on my toes and getting new questions. I, I absolutely love that part. What's the most unusual interview question you've ever been asked? Oh my goodness. Well, I think we talked about this last time about my hidden talent. I don't really have a hidden talent. Oh no, talent. don't, no. <laughs> no, no, God, no, that, that, uh, no. I you. remember. The last interview, if you want to know what that talent is. <laughs> oh, God, I just, it, so just to clarify, you can still do that. Oh, I can still do that with both arms, both arms now. Is that healthy? Very, very. Well, yeah. Has it gotten better or worse? Like, I mean. Well, it's still constant. It's still there. <laughs> Just to clarify, for those of you wondering what on earth we're talking about, uh, how would you describe it? Is it double jointed? Right. So my arms are double jointed. If you want to look away, it looks like this. And then oh, it goes. Oh, like this. Oh, oh. <laughs> yes. oh God. Mm -hmm. That's a that's mm -hmm. that's a neat party trick. Um, yeah. Have you have you found any practical use for that? <laughs> Well, Apart it, from freaking me out, I mean, that that's great. But any other practical use for it? It's actually very helpful when you're getting a spray tan for pageants. Um, you know, I can turn my arm so that we can make sure we get the inside. So it's pretty great. 
Um, just just changing the topic so I don't vomit right here. Have you always been good at interview? Because I remember remarking, I mean, last time was two years ago, so even younger than you are now, you're still young. Um, but did interview always come easily to yourself? Because I, I seem to remember you saying that your mom took you around to a lot of business events. So that's kind of right. where you got the, the gift of the gab, so to speak. Right. Uh, interview absolutely did not come natural to me. Um, my first pageant interview, I was a deer in headlights. I, oh my goodness, I wish I had a video of it because it was traumatizing. Um, <laughs> but my mom has definitely instilled in me great interview tactics from growing up within Avon, which is where she worked and she's worked since I was born. And being able to be around them and truly be an Avon baby has allowed me to be in the room with incredible people who have incredible stories and being able to hear their stories really influences me and makes me talk better and learn more about myself, not only them, but truly helps me develop myself as well. Absolutely. And for the for the girls watching, can you give them any interview tips? Because I know from having asked a lot of the time, the section that they struggle with most is interview. So coming from yourself, someone who's really good at interview or loves interview, I mean, you're both, any interview tips for the people watching? I, I absolutely have two tips. My first tip is let anyone interview you. I think it's very vital to have people from different backgrounds with different um, questions that can ask you anything. I, when I'm preparing for a pageant, my mom invites friends over and we have everyone over and they just fire away. And it's, you know, it's very informal, but having those moments where they, you may get asked a question and you don't know, and that's completely fine, but I would rather that happen to you within the comfort of your own home or mm. with a restaurant than behind a pageant stage. So you absolutely just want to make sure that you are developing and having people from every background interview you. Um, my second tip is to learn how to control an interview. I think that is the most vital thing you can ever learn when you're a pageant girl. Being able to take a question and steer it in the way you want to go is incredibly vital. And especially when you're an interview, I know for USA, our interview is two minutes. So it's pretty fast. Wow. fast so you want to get out what your purpose is, what you want these judges to know about you. And so being able to control the interview really allows you to do that. So just give us sort of the, the heads up, like the, the brief overview as to how you do that. So let's say someone asks you an interview question and it doesn't give you a chance to talk about the things that you want to talk about. How do you steer it towards something that's more on purpose for yourself? Right. Um, I think it varies from question to question. I mean, I was always told um, in an interview, if you are talking about something that isn't your purpose for the interview. So mm -hmm. let's say if you really wanna talk about your platform and you're sitting in the interview and they're talking about your hobbies, it's very, it's not rude to say, um, I love this hobby of mine, but the real reason I'm here, what I really wanna talk to you about is my platform. I think that that's absolutely okay. And it helps steer the interview where you wanna go. And I, as a judge, when I judge pageants, if, if a competitor said that to me, I'd be like, perfect, let's talk about it. Hmm. Uh, and so I think that's absolutely okay and perfect to do to control an interview. And I don't know if you've ever frozen in interview, but I do know a lot of girls have, their, their biggest fear is in interview, they get asked a question that for whatever reason, they just can't answer, nothing comes into their head. How do you deal with that? When you ask that question that you just have no idea about or you have no idea how to answer, how do you go about answering? Is it a pause first and then thinking about it and then responding or how do you handle it? I absolutely think that for every question you should take a pause. Um, it's super easy to just spit fire something so that you, yeah. you save yourself the awkward silence. But really just taking that two second pause and kind of gather your thoughts allows you to truly understand the path that you're going with for that question. Um, in an interview, I truly understand that every question should show a different skill about me, something interesting about me, share the judge something new. And so being able to just take the time, understand what you're gonna go for and just run for it. Um, I think the most important thing in an interview is to not second guess yourself. Wherever you start mm. talking, finish it. Um, don't try to save yourself, girl. You've already started um so own it and just be confident in that and you mentioned that the um the the usa interview was two minutes which yeah. is extremely short extremely so fast. how do you manage to compress everything that you want to say within two minutes given that the question might not necessarily lend itself to that how do you manage to compress 
Right. So I think with every question, you have to kind of have a time frame with. Um, you can't go more than 30 seconds on a question, which normally in a conversation we would um, to truly answer to the fullest of its abilities. So really just getting out the statement, keeping every question within a sentence or two is very vital for that two minute interview. And again, just really controlling it to the best of your abilities. Right. Um, I'll just bring you up to date with the comments. So, okay. So Lauren over in Wales has said she's ordering now. Perfect. Okay. So if you get an order from Wales, that's where it's from. Uh, Evelyn here has said she's absolutely beautiful. Oh, thank you. Tammy Curry Evans has said so pretty Savannah and that all we love Avon. Uh, and Jessica Romaine Malaki has said so poised and well spoken. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> Lots of love for you there. Um, Savannah, you mentioned that you've judged, uh, judged on occasion. Mm -hmm. When it comes to judging, so the shoes on the other foot, yes. I think it's interesting to ask, what do you look for in a, in a competitor? I absolutely, from being a competitor, competitor, I truly value genuine, gen, being genuine. Um, seeing a girl who truly loves being there is something that I can absolutely relate to. So when a girl enters the interview room or she's on stage and she truly looks like she's having fun and she enjoys being here, that is absolutely, you are on the top of my list when you look like that. Um, you know, I one of the patents I judge, I got to meet Johanna, who commented a few minutes ago, um, but she was in the pageant and no, was she the most well-spoken? Probably not, but she truly loved being there. She was beautiful. Um, there was definitely potential there and being able to, we crowned her, we got to work with her for a year and now she's on to great things and succeeding in the pageant world. Um, and that really just goes for, to being genuine and being hardworking and truly wanting to be there and wanting to hold the title. I think that's really necessary to be a title holder. And for yourself, are you able to guess as to the person you would be without pageants if your mum let's say hadn't for whatever reason let you actually compete in pageants how would you be a different person today oh my goodness I definitely don't think I would be as mature as I am now I definitely would not understand myself as much as I do um, pageants truly allow a lot of self-development and to truly understand what you want um, in every aspect of your life um, so I, I often think like where would I be without pageants and I mm. I can't even imagine the girl because she would be far different than the one that is sitting before you. Um, I, I would definitely not be where I am today and not see the goals that I, I see now. I would have never even dreamed about them if I would not have stepped on a pageant stage. And I know, I know people often wonder like advice as to why or tell people why you should get into pageants. I think watching you and seeing what you've achieved, that that's a given. Um, so I'll ask you a different question in terms of choosing what system to go into. So let's say someone watches this interview and goes, okay, I want to, or I need to enter pageants. Obviously there are a lot of systems. How do you go about picking the system that's right for you? I definitely think that you need to look into a lot of systems before you decide on one. Really just understanding what your um, what your talents are. For me, I know I don't have what you would have as a stage talent. I cannot sing. I should not dance. Um, and so understanding whoa, whoa, that. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What happens when you dance? Um, well, well, hang on. What happens when you sing? <laughs> <laughs> to answer both questions. No, I'm not sure anyone should be like stuck in a room having to watch that. <laughs> I don't think anyone would enjoy it. <laughs> so it's not good. No, not a good so visual. If, if the fate of the world rested on you either singing or dancing, which one is Savannah Miles going to pick? Well, I sing a lot, um, even when I shouldn't. So I would definitely sing. But people should probably bring earplugs um, because it's not going to be very good. <laughs> I'm not believing you on this one. This is false modesty, right? I'm sure, okay, you might not be a Celine Dion, but I'm sure you can carry your tune, right? Oh, uh, you know, maybe some days. <laughs> All right, but sorry, I, I interrupted you. So in terms of picking the pageant that's right, right. for you, so what advice understand. do you have on that? <laughs> definitely understand what your talents are. For me, I know I don't have a talent that can go on a stage. Um, so 
that's that checks off a lot right there. Um, yeah. And just understanding what you want a system to stand for. Um, if you've gone through something in particular in your life that you see as a platform that you want other girls to resonate with, to really find a, a system that will allow you to amplify that is very vital. Um, and I also I also love to watch pageants, so I keep mm. watching them even when I'm not competing and really just watching the pageant, the production and seeing if I can envision myself there and want to be a part of that family and that system. Perfect. Can you give people an idea as to how many maybe ballpark pageants they should research into before making a decision? Are we talking like five, 10, 20, or just like as many as you can? I, I think it's different for everyone. I think once mm. you find that pageant that you want to be that title holder for, you will know. Um, it's a fire that I know whenever I first watched Miss Georgia Teen USA and I sat in the audience as a little girl, I, I knew I wanted to be up on that stage one day and it was that easy for me. Um, so I think just finding that pageant that sets that fuel and that you want to see yourself there, um, that's yeah. what you know. Uh, now, Johanna has said, love you forever here. And um, the, uh, your mom has said she can sing, but she dances like a cheerleader. Now, what's now th this is a thing because I know that you did cheerleading when you were in college. I what's did. wrong with dancing like a cheerleader? Like, is that supposed to be a bad thing? Is that a good thing? You know, I, I'm not sure it's dancing that should be in any public place. I mean, like in a cheerleading game, yes. Um, but like I clap like this, not like a normal person. <laughs> I clap like a cheerleader. Um, and I, I don't really have any rhythm. So I think that's my problem. <laughs> so. Okay, hang on. Why, why is this the cheerleader clap? Why, why not like, like this? this? You clap like this so it's louder. When you clap like this, it's soft. Oh. Yeah. So when you're oh, okay. Oh, because I was gonna say I clap like this, so that I guess I'm a cheerleader then. You are. I found myself a cheerleader. Oh. Oh, dear me. <laughs> um, she dances like a cheerleader though. But see, I, I know nothing about cheerleading outside of what I've seen on American TV shows about cheerleaders, and it's almost as bad as watching movies about pageantry. It doesn't normally portray it in a very positive light. So can we talk a little bit about cheerleading, how you got into it? Did you enjoy it? Are you still doing it? Right. So I cheered a little bit when I was in elementary school um, and middle school. But then when I went to online school, my freshman year of high school, I obviously stopped cheerleading because there was not yeah. an online cheerleading team for some reason. Um, <laughs> but so when I went off to college, I wanted an opportunity to be able to make friends and to have a family up in St. Louis. And so I joined my college cheerleading team with not very much experience um, and getting to work with incredible people in Georgia to prepare myself to, to cheer in college was definitely intense. I have so much respect for cheerleaders and athletes because it was a lot of work, but it was so much fun. Um, I'm, I'm not doing it anymore. I stunt with my friends every now and then, but um, now I'm truly just focusing on school. Right. And again, I, I know very little about cheerleading. so. Do you know like cheers? Do you have to remember cheers? So yeah, you remember cheers are, are like fight songs. So like your school um, and college will have a fight song that you guys sing in the beginning of every game. <laughs> but I thought you said you can't sing. I mean, you don't sing it, you like cheer it. So, I mean, the crowd, oh. you cheer. I know nothing about this, obviously. So can you give us an example of a cheer? I mean, you don't need to do all the, the acrobatics of it, but can you give us an example of a cheer? Because I've never heard one. Okay, so our fight song, I went to Lindenwood. So it goes like, bah. so like the band plays and it goes, bum, 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 bum. And it goes, Lindenwood, our hats off to you. Loyal to our colors is always true. Stand and fight whatever the score. Courage, strength, and hearts, you bold colors uphold. Fight for the black and gold. And then you start again. <laughs> Thank you for doing that. That'll make a um, very neat clip. <laughs> um, yeah. and, and cheerleading, like final question about cheerleading, they throw people up in the air and catch them. So are you one of those people who's up in the air being thrown around or are you one of the people on the ground who's catching? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so I actually do co-ed stunting with my friends. So that's the one where there's one guy throwing one girl and he catches her, does something. So yes, I'm the one up in the air. <laughs> that's 
dare I ask, had, did you have any accidents with that? Um, so many, so many. I've given my friends countless black eyes from elbowing them or coming down wrong. <laughs> I have like bruises on my hips from them throwing me. It's it's a pretty physical sport. I how do you learn to do that though? I mean, assuming you don't just go out in the ground and someone throws you up and go, I'll see if I can catch you, and if you fall down, oh well. Like, how do you get to the point where you're like being throwing around and then like turning around in the air? Yeah, I mean, it it takes a lot. You start at a cheerleading gym, so there's mats everywhere. Um, and I had an amazing teacher named Ted who was able to teach me the whole game, um, understanding what to do once I got up there and all the good things. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, that was a fascinating insight into the world of cheerleading. It's something mm -hmm. I've never, never looked into. As I said, I've only seen like, is it easy A or, or something like that? Or what was the other? It is a common one. If you've seen Bring It On. That's right. Yeah, that, yeah. That's the one I was thinking of. Yeah. Um, it didn't, from what I remember it. Oh, never mind. I'm just going to embarrass myself. Okay. That was an insight into the world of cheerleading. Now, just before we go to the final 10, and Savannah, the final 10 are going to be the same as last time. So if you can answer the same or different, it really doesn't matter. But we'll before, we, before we get to the final 10, is there anyone that you want to give a shout out to just to say thanks for supporting you along your journey, not just pageantry, but also just in life in general? Right, right. Well, I will give a big shout out to Miss Amelia and Joanna. Um, they really are the ones that encourage me to keep competing and to compete at Teen Universe next month. Um, obviously, my mom, my best friend, she's stuck with me for life. So I got to shout her out every chance she gets. <laughs> and those are my, my main people. I keep my circle pretty small, but really strong. Which is, I think, the way it should be. It's uh, quality, not quantity. Amen. Okay. Now, how many of your answers do you remember from last time? Um, zero. <laughs> I have no idea. I don't think I can remember any of them. But I think what will happen here is that as I ask them, they might come back. I'm still traumatized by the double jointed elbows, so please do yeah. not. Although I had to make sure to include it for you. You know, again. It's just. Just out of curiosity, please don't demonstrate, but are you double, like, does double jointed go anywhere else? Like, I've seen people who can bend their thumbs back to their arm. Like, can you do any of the other weird stuff? Sadly not, just my arms. That's all I have. Oh, thank God. Good. <laughs> why is it, why is it just, why, why is it just in your arms? Like, specifically your elbows? I don't know. I was born like it, and my aunt is the only other one in my family that's double jointed. She was like, oh, she's like me. <laughs> <laughs> so when you catch up, do you bond over like a weird handshake where you dislocate your elbows? I think so. I could make one. <laughs> oh dear. Oh dear. As you can tell, I'm not okay with this and like med school and stuff like, oh God, I hope you don't see anyone with a dislocated elbow or anything like that. Anyway, let's get on to the final 10 before I make myself sick. First question, what is your favorite word? My favorite word. Oh, I remember what I said last time. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna. I don't. Oh, okay. My favorite word now is probably bless it. I say it all the time. Um, it's kind of just my thing. I'll be like bless it, bless. <laughs> I think it's a southern thing that I picked up. But before, remember, I said oh. Grr. Oh, that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that was the answer to this question. I think that was the answer to question number five, which we'll get to, but I do remember that. <laughs> and I am nowhere, I'm still nowhere near being able to say that. How do you say it again? Oh, you have to roll your R, so it's oh, I know, but I, I, I can't roll my R, so yeah. what's my chance? I'll just, I'll just end up spitting all over the place. That's what happened. <laughs> Lovely. Know. Question two, what is your least favorite word? My least favorite word. Hmm. Well, I hate the, the saying, I guess, um, where do you want to eat? I can never decide where I want to eat. And my mom is constantly asking me, well, where do you want to go? What do you want to eat? And I'm like, I don't know. I just want food. <laughs> so I hate being asked that. So what do you want to eat? I'm, I don't know. I'm super indecisive. I <laughs> narrow it down for you. Do you have a favorite food? What's your favorite food? We can't go through a pageant interview without asking you what's your favorite food. It's still crepes. I love crepes. That's right. Yes. This, 
Have you been to Paris? I seem to remember you talking about you're going to go to Paris and have a crepe. I will, but not yet, but I will soon. <laughs> okay. All right. But you've had a crepe before, right? You know what they are. So many, so many. That, that many. Okay. So many. <laughs> a lot. All right. Okay. <laughs> Question three in life, what gets you excited? What turns you on? Um, I definitely love seeing goals met. So for me, being able to just keep pushing comes from seeing little goals succeed. Um, and so having that really turns me on to keep going and fighting for what I want. Very nice. What turns you off? Ooh, I definitely do not love when people aren't genuine. I think it's something you can very much pick up on. And so someone who doesn't radiate being genuine is not my kind of person. Okay, now just um, to pause for a sec, Kayla here has said, show us, I came a little late. So can you please show Kayla your elbows and I will just blank oh, myself out. Kayla, I'm here for you, girl. Tell okay. me when it's over. This is like your normal elbow and then mine goes like this. Can you see that? Yes, I hope you loved it. Both of them do it. So that's my party. Kayla, are you happy now? <laughs> Thank God I haven't eaten anything. I'm doing interviews on an empty stomach. Question five, what sound or noise do you love? And I think this is where you said that word that I can't say. <laughs> All right, so just for interest, apart from that word that I cannot say, it's like, it's like talking about, um, what is it? The in Harry, Harry Potter Voldemort. It's like he who can't be named. It's like that word that can, cannot be said. So apart from that word that cannot be said, Okay. What is your favorite noise? My favorite noise. Oh my goodness. I love when my cat like purrs, but like very like internally. She's like, mm. <laughs> she's so cute. So that's my favorite noise. <laughs> I agree with that one. I love hearing my cat purr. It makes me happy. Um, question six. What sound or noise do you hate? Oh goodness. I hate the sound of my alarm clock in the morning. That is torture and the worst sound ever invented. <laughs> What sort of alarm sound do you have? Well, it changes. Sometimes I put it on songs, but then I end up hating that song because I like associate it with, you, I have to wake up. So now I'm down to like the basic iPhone, ring, ring. <laughs> That's fair enough. Um, I put up an Instagram question about this, just out of interest. Are you an early bird or a night owl? More, more now I'm an early bird. Um, I go to school at 9 a.m. every day and I work out before. So I'm normally waking up at like 6.30 or 7. Um, oh. But I definitely stay up late on the weekend. So I guess I can do both. <laughs> yeah, sounds about right. Okay, question seven. If you could have any one superpower, what would you pick and why? Oh, my goodness. Well, okay, this is probably not a superpower to you. If I could have any like power, so I'm actually, I recently found out I'm colorblind. And so if I can have any power, I would love to be able to like switch it on and off. So to be able to truly see color and then to go back to the way I see the world. That is so bizarre. I was just thinking about what it would be like to be colorblind yesterday. Do, and there's different types of colorblinds. So what colorblind are you? So I can't see blue or green. Um, they look gray to me, I guess. That's what it would look like to you. Um, but to me, that's wow. what I think blue and green with. Wow. Okay. Well, that sucks. Is there any way to, to bring that back? Or is that just something that you have to learn to live with? So it's they have glasses for it that may or may not work. It really is just dependent on the way that your eye um, works. Um, mm. But so it's really something you have to live with until they make something new with science. So we'll see. <laughs> Okay. Well, fingers crossed. Um, question eight, what job, I mean, this is a bit different for you because you're still a student, but I'll ask it anyway. What job or occupation other than your own would you most like to attempt? Oh, goodness. I would love to be a, I would love to be a news anchor. I feel like that'd be so fun. Mm -hmm. So I would love to like be at little football games and talk to the players. Um, but I definitely don't think that's my career choice, but it would be fun to do for a day. <laughs> I could see you doing that. I mean, obviously you interview well. So have you ever interviewed anyone else? Yes, yes. Well, so I have actually am just started getting into pageant coaching. So being able to coach girls for interview and interview them has been definitely fun to watch, watch them struggle. <laughs> you mean, mean person. No. Uh, question. <laughs> 
tough love. Question nine, what job or occupation would you definitely not like to attempt? Oh my goodness, I would be a terrible chef, terrible chef. I can cook like within the comfort of my own home, but having to cook for a large amount of people continuously, I would definitely probably snack on the food the whole time. I, my restaurant would have no food. I would eat it all. So I'd be a terrible chef. <laughs> I think you're doing it wrong if you've eaten all the food. So you can you can cook, you just eat it all. I would, yes. <laughs> okay, all right, that'll be an interesting restaurant to go to, pay for the food and it never comes out. Yes. Final question. If heaven exists, what would you like to hear God say when you arrive at the pearly gates? Right, um, I definitely think that the, the best thing he could say was that you did an incredible job and fulfilled your purpose to be on earth. And so I would love for him just to say thank you for what you've done and welcome to heaven. Perfect. Okay. Well, guys, if you have any final questions for Savannah before I let her go, make sure you put them in below. Um, but Savannah, thank you so much for your time for the second time. Of course and um best of luck in uh, october do you know whether it will be because a lot of my audience is not in the us do you know whether it will be live streamed or potentially televised right it should be live streamed um i know that the international one is televised um but it should be live streamed either way so i can get you the link to share once we get a little closer absolutely um and for people to follow your pageant journey just in terms of social what are the best social platforms to catch you on Right. So to watch my journey to this in particular pageant to Miss Teen Universe, um, I have an Instagram page and it's Teen Universe Georgia, GA. And so that's the one you can follow for this pageant. And then my personal Instagram is Savannah Miles. Perfect. Are you, I, I know you're on TikTok. I don't think you've put any videos on. Are you yeah. TikToking at all? Oh, um, I know all the dances, but I am not publicly on TikTok. <laughs> You're not going to do a TikTok dance and become TikTok famous? Um, I'm not sure I would become TikTok famous with my cheerleading dance moves. <laughs> so, <laughs> but I love learning them. Um, they're amazing to watch. Very Wh Which one, without needing to demonstrate, which ones have you, have you memorized? Um, okay, I know. Oh, goodness. This is hard on the spot. I've learned like the one that goes like, Pull up extra icy. I'm not playing hockey. <laughs> do you know that one? I don't think I've. Se I don't think I've seen that one. I mean, there's so many. There. Uh, did, have, have you? This is the one that's been stuck in my head ever since I did the podcast. Have you? Have you done this one? Oh yeah, the, bum, the, bum, bum. And then this one. <laughs> yeah. See you. I reckon you could give it a go. That was done very well. You obviously look like a professional dancer there. Oh. Um. <laughs> he lies. <laughs> I think you did that very capably. I mean, the way you went from shoulder to shoulder, it was very seamless. So, you know, pro, <laughs> very, very pro. Uh, now, Amelia here has said, yes, it will. So I'm assuming that it'll be live streamed. So that's great. So everyone yeah. can tune in to it. Okay. Well, Savannah, there are no more questions. So thank you so much for oh, your time. Thank you so much. I will keep you on the line for just a second whilst I hang up with the audience. But thanks to everyone for thank watching. You. And we will speak to you next time. Hey guys, it's Adrian again. If you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe and remember to head over to pageantlaunch.com and join the launch team for our pageant review site. All you need to do is put in your email address. Thanks and uh, speak to you next time.